today we're, we're exposing subversion for all it is. Uh, so basically we're talking about um, version control. And my choice topic is subversion, and you'll see why here in a minute. So what is version control? What, 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 what problems do we encounter whenever we uh, want to develop software? Among many developers, we know that uh, you have to share files amongst many people. So the problem comes through. It's very this. This is back from the SVN books that you can find on uh, the Tigris website. Uh, but so Harry and Sally want to read a file. They both get the mo most current version of the file, and ha and they both start modifying it. Harry then writes back to the repository his file, and then there's Sally, and all of Harry's changes are not there. So there's several tools and philosophies for how you do uh, file synchronization. So. Um, one method is the lock, lock, modify, unlock. Uh, this is the default for uh, Visual Tool Safe. Uh, so basically, the way that works is you say to the repository, "I want to edit this file," and it gives you a copy of the file and locks it so nobody else can edit it or do anything with it, uh, retrieve it, or whatnot. Uh, so nobody else can do it. When you're done, you you unlock it, and then the next person can uh, retrieve it and get your changes. So um, there are a couple drawbacks to this. Um, one, it kind of inhibits the parallel development on the same or, or related files. So even if you have files with dependencies, it kind of inhibits the development. Because of the false sense of security you get, uh, if they're locked, I can't screw anything up, so I'm safe. But that kind of falls by the wayside if you have uh, two files that have dependencies, and uh, one person's working on one file, and another person's working on the, the other file. Well. You know they're not locked, so they should be able to work. You end up making changes. Once you commit them all in, nothing works anymore because of uh, this kind of false sense of security. It's also a little administrative uh, headache sometimes, and so is subversion. So I'm not I'm not just bashing uh, Soul Safe or anything, um, but it also creates a kind of a administrative headache on you know who has the lock, where's the lock at, can we find the person with the lock? We've had several instances where we're run we're running around. Uh, yelling at each other, trying to find out who has a lock on the file. So, uh, I do not like this method. There are cases where you do want to do a lock, modify, and lock. Uh, one really good benefit of using this method is for binary files or also uh, generated files, uh, because uh, there's no merging of sections. You can't do section changes in, uh, w within a within a binary file very easily. Um, the next methodology, as you will guess, is going to be the way Subversion by default does it. It's called the Copy, Modify, Merge. So Harry and Sally both check out the uh, file that they want to modify. Uh, they both start making their changes, A and A prime. Uh, Sally gets done first, so she uh, commits her code to the repository. Um, and then whenever, whenever Harry wants to, he actually gets what's called a co file conflict, since the version he was working off of is uh, less than the current version of the file that's on the repository. So now the, the repository now knows that there has been a modification and he's trying to commit a version of the file that's now uh, outdated. And so that's when you get a conflict and you'll have to do the merge itself. So once he gets the conflict on the bottom right hand side, then what happens is he rechecks out the file. And so he has a double prime plus his a prime that he changed. He manually has to merge the changes and then he commits actually what's now a triple prime to the repository. So that's how the copy modify merge works on a by choice of developer. So um, drawbacks. You can't really use with binary files which I've already said. Um, it is also very frustrating if you're not familiar with the concepts behind the copy modify merge or even the tools that you're using to do it. And um, I've been frustrated before, uh, but I've also seen other people really frustrated because it's it's like voodoo sometimes. So that's what this lunch to learn about is to teach you about how to use subversion because that's who we use. So uh, the general structure of your repository in subversion is you have three main directories within a given project in your repository: uh, trunk, tags, and branches. Uh, in the trunk you should have your edge released at all times. It should be compiling, it should be working, and it should be the most recent uh, of your code that has been integrated in testing and works. And uh, it's a good idea never to work in your trunk. Uh, tags are something um, 
that is really convenient to do. You can create uh, milestones or releases or snapshots of the project at a certain given point in time. So say you are building by milestones. When you get to milestone one and you've integrated everything back into the trunk and the trunk works, then you want to be able to go back to that one milestone and you can create a tag, which is just like creating a branch except it's an unmodified version of a, a copy of the code of the trunk. And um, so you can create that tag and you can go back to it any time. Uh, you create it once and you never modify it. It, sh it should not be, you should not work on a tag. So. And finally we have the branches. Um, branches are basically where we do all of our work at. Um, there are several ways you can organize how you branch and how you merge and whatnot. A kind of a method that I'm going to be going through with y'all today is something that we've been using and enhancing and changing how we kind of organize our uh, branches um, from, I guess it started with, uh, I guess it really started with context and then went on to DSOB Exclusive where Kareem really stepped up and uh, started making a way and then we carried it on through Universe. So this is kind of the way we did it is uh, each di disjoint component in your architecture um, is its own branch. And I'll show you kind of how that progresses throughout your project, starting with uh, architectural design, how it, it looks within your project plan, where, where you create branches, where, where you stop and do integration and everything. And it also somewhat forces code reviews and integration testing. Uh, there are automated tools. I know that you're all looking at Cruise Control. The, I didn't have the document, the documents that were ready for me to see how Cruise Control works. So that will be a, a future lunch and learn that Kareem's going to give you next week. <laughs> or, or after. But, but uh, basically there is um, there are tools that you can also use that will work with your repository. But um, whenever you get to an integration point where you have to start doing uh, merges back into the trunk or into an integration branch, it kind of forces you to do your integration testing. Or you, you could still integrate and not retest your, your code, but um, it, it kind of facilitates that uh, pretty cleanly. So here's our example. We got the Easy Breezy Employment Employee Manager 1.0, or the EDUM 1.0. Uh, this is a brief architecture. It's kind of hard to read, but uh, it, I didn't put a lot of time or thought into it. Um, but there's an email notification layer that has some, some components in it. The em Employee Management layer, which is really a web application with um, two other subsystems in it that actually do all the business logic and will test the data. And you have a reporting layer and a source of database. So this is just a simple don't don't knock my my architecture. I just kind of came up with it within ten minutes. But this is our example. We're going to be showing you uh, how we're going to do the development within employee employee management layer using our repository within the context of our project plan. 